Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher. Welcome back to my shop. And this is short subject number 11. And it's all about reversing the jaws on both three jaw and four jaw chucks. Okay, here's two common universal three jaw chucks that I use on the Atlas lathes or any of my smaller lathes. These jaws are in the most common position where we grip the work, especially smaller work, in a manner such as this. It's easier to show you this on the bench than it is the actual machine. Sometimes we want to reverse the jaws, such as what you see here, for larger work, and then the work can be held like that and tightened up. The exact same thing is true with the four jaw chuck. Only we can use the same jaws. We do not need a separate set of jaws and we simply reverse them in a manner like this. And you've seen me do that I'm sure in many videos over the years. Sometimes we use a combination of reverse jaws on these two sides and the jaws in this position on the other. Depending on what you're holding, it might be an irregular casting. So it's real simple with a four jaw chuck that is sometimes called an independent jaw chuck. So we won't talk any more about that. So if we want to reverse the jaws in a three jaw chuck, it's quite a different thing because this is sometimes called a scroll chuck and you need a different set of jaws. Now these jaws are specific to this chuck. They cannot interchange with other brands or even a brand that is the same and they will have a serial number on them and the serial number has to match the serial number on the chuck and you will find that if you examine it closely. Also the jaws are numbered one, two, three. So let's install the other jaws in this chuck. So I will quickly remove this set of jaws Use your electric drill, it sure will speed things up. Until they are all clear of the scroll and then they will pull out. As such. So notice that when you look at the back of these jaws, the teeth are reversed, they are curved. Now when you have the chuck jaws out, make sure you clean everything properly. I'm not going to show any of that. It would be nice to blow all of this out. But if you look down here into a three jaw chuck, you will see the scroll. Now watch as I turn the scroll. It's more like a thread, only on the face of a piece of work. Now I have numbered the jaw slots here. One two and three. They're stamped in here too, but I did that so it would show up a little bit better. Now watch closely in slot number one as I rotate the scroll. Can you see the beginning of the thread there? So after this is all cleaned up, what you want to do is find the beginning like that and back it up just a little bit and then take jaw number one Remember the curves and slide it in there like that and press a little bit as you turn it and it will engage. See that? Now the scroll thread will come around to slot two. There's the beginning of it and that's when you will install chuck jaw Number two, also in the reverse position. And can you see now that both jaws are moving simultaneously? And then similarly, we'll do that with slot three. So here we come with slot three. There's the beginning. Put jaw three. This is jaw three. You cannot mix them. They have to be 
in that order. I missed it a little bit, got to back up. There we go. Now with the drill I'll run them all up at the same time and we'll see if they meet at the center. If they do not, you have missed one of the jaws by one tooth. Okay, here we go. Let's see if they meet in the center. And they come together properly. So, these jaws are installed correctly and the chuck is ready to use. I like to take my spare jaws and put them in a baggie or wrap them with wire or something and then in the place where we don't get them mixed up with the other chuck because I have about 10 chucks around here and at various auctions over the years I have ended up with all kinds of extra sets of chucks chuck jaws and they really need to be thrown away because you'll never find the correct chuck for them to, to match and these are hand fitted in the factory. Many chucks such as this Bernard does not have an extra set of jaws but they have jaw caps that are held on by cap screws as you can see so we simply reverse the cap. We do not need to take the jaws all the way out. This takes quite a bit of time I've found. I believe it's actually quicker to change a set of jaws than to change these but let me pull one off real quickly so I can show you what I'm talking about. Let me just remove one jaw. And by the way, the two cap screws are not the same length, so take note of that. Now this would have to be cleaned up real well. Notice there's a number two there, and someplace here there's a number two, and also the serial number of this chuck. So this needs to be cleaned up real well. There's there are chips in there and then the jaw can be reversed like that and the other two as well. But that takes quite a bit of time really and usually you would do this while the chuck is mounted on the machine. So I'll clean this off and put this one back in the position in which I use it the most frequently. And you can see that this big bison chuck here on the closing lathe is made similarly with jaw caps. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about lathe chucks, both the three jaw universal and the four jaw independent, and it's all about switching jaws back and forth. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now, and I'll see you next time.